Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's been quite some time that we have not posted any video. Yes. The last time we posted was in the month of January. And we do appreciate your patience. A lot of you people, folks, have been asking us when's the next video, when's the next vlog, etc. Mm -hmm. And we do have reasons for that. So we thought we'll just share uh, what happened to us, why we took a break, a short break rather and why we were missing from YouTube for the past few months. Because the last time uh, we posted was in January. Yes. Our daughter's birthday, Heather's birthday. Since then, we haven't been uh, posting anything, any videos, nothing. So we will get into that uh, point by point, like bits by bits. Yeah. We'll just explain what has happened to us, why we took a break, and how did we end up here. I'm sure everyone's already heard we have a second daughter. Yes. But let's, my, as my wife has said already, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time. January, Tiano's birthday. We had a lovely time there. We even shared the video here. We um, celebrated her first birthday in yes. Imphal, Manipur. Uh, we want since it was her first birthday, we wanted to celebrate with our families because everyone was back at home in Nepal at that time. So we decided to go home and celebrate her birthday, her first birthday. Yes. After that, um, I had to leave Nepal once again because I was working, and I had to stay back because I was pregnant. I had to stay back with Heather, and then he left for Delhi again in February. Yes. In February and then it was I think those moments were actually uh, one of the hardest for me because I was so used to staying with my wife and uh, my eldest daughter back then yeah. and nights were quite lonely and sometimes I used to miss those delicious meals that my wife would make every dinner or lunch we were separated for a few months but I was fortunate enough to get um, an opportunity to work from home and that was when we, uh, I came back. I okay. went back again to Manipur. Nepal. So Feb uh, January, we came to Manipur to celebrate the eldest daughter's birthday. Then February, he went back to Delhi. Then again in March, he came back in March to Impal. So, uh, he got uh, March, approved yes. for work from home. Yeah. So he came back to Impal. So our daily routine, I think we'll move on to that. Um, yeah. So normally, I mean, since my wife was also keeping herself busy uh, doing her own work and business, uh, we would wake up early in the morning and we would head out for her work by 9.30 or 10 in the morning. What exactly I was doing was that I was like, uh, my elder sister, she has a clothing store there in Nimfal. So I was the one taking care of her store. I was handling her marketing up from uh, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. we would go together we would leave Heather with my mother-in-law or my mother yeah sometimes I would leave her with my mother-in-law sometimes I would leave her with my mother and then we would head out for uh, the store around like 10 a.m. Uh, up till 4 p.m. then from 4 p.m. if I left Heather with my mom we would go and pick her up then we will come back together at home so basically before 5 we will try to reach home and then from 5 p.m. his uh, work starts work from home and then I work till 2 a.m. or sometimes 1 a.m. in the morning and that was usually our routine for the next uh, two three months yeah. after March that was why we were so busy we didn't get time to film and on top of that like I was so busy handling the store and then I was pregnant and then with a the toddler it was too much for us and he was working from home he wouldn't get sleep so it was too much was going on so that was the reason why we couldn't be active but we would make videos yeah. in between there was many clips in our camera we would just random random videos we were making and we were keeping so that we would like combine them all together and upload it someday yeah, that, that was, was our plan that was the plan and in fact w those videos were quite precious i think i would say this because we're coming to the part where you know what happened in the month of may uh, when everything was when when everything seemed normal to at least to not just our family but to everyone around and so 
May 3rd. Yes. And uh, we're just going to share whatever happened to, you know, me and uh, whatever happened to my wife that particular on day. On May 3rd, yeah. On May 3rd. So, right, May 3rd. Um, it was a normal day for all of us. And we were at the shop. My wife was at the shop. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, she was tired. So, before May 3rd, she wanted to get some rest because obviously she was pregnant, she was tired, and uh, so I, I we handling a shop. Yeah. Then Heather, it was too much. Yeah. So she was staying with the with my in laws for quite my some mother, time. Yeah. So that particular day, I remember we were taking the pups. We had two new puppies. Uh, golden retrievers. Golden retrievers. Charlie's own kids. So we have a pet named Charlie. Uh, he is like. Oh, he's four, four yeah. years old. Four years old now. Yeah, he's four years old. Charlie, and then there was another wonderful dog named Coco. Yeah. Um, they we were giving them off. I mean, they, basically they were, they mates and then they had new puppies. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we took two puppies, one male and one female. And we named Shelby. We named and them both Shelby and Summer. So, so yeah, I remember we took them to the vet to get mm -hmm. the vaccinations. And Charlie was back home, and yes, yeah, yeah, the routine checkup. Yes. And after that, I dropped my wife back home to my in-laws, yeah. and then that's when I decided to go back home. That particular day, we were like, after taking the puppies uh, to the vet, when we came back, uh, we bought medicines and all the daily supplements for the puppies, and then uh, we were we were having golgappa together around six thirty p.m. I think, yeah. Yeah, Around 6.30 p.m. we were having Golgapa together or Pani Puri, whatever. And then there I stayed back at my parents' place. How he uh, mentioned that I wanted to rest for like a week. I was there for like a week already by the time. So I, I wanted to stay more. So I was there and then he left. He left with the two puppies um, and then I stayed back at my parents' place. So it was around 7.15 p.m. and I was just about to start my work. So I opened my laptop and then that moment, the moment after that, there were stones and sticks just flying into my room and I got scared. And so I, I, I took my dog, Charlie, and we rushed to my grandma's room behind and we were hiding there for some time. and. I met my aunt, my uncle, and my grandmom, and everyone else. They were all hiding there with their lights off on the floor. And I realized that I forgot uh, my two puppies, Shelby and Summer. So I had to rush back in and um, I quickly grabbed those two puppies and I was carrying them. And on the way out, because there was still this commotion going on, and I also heard car alarms earlier and people trashing and, and destroying and hitting car windows. So I decided to take a small a peek and then that's when I realized that it was my car and it was not the car uh, from the showrooms. We were staying near the car showroom. It was not one of the, the, their cars, but it was mine, it was ours. And then after that, as soon as I, I went outside as well, a neighbor's house was on fire and we quickly went back in and it was getting, things were getting escalated. People were not stopping. They were not stopping at all. So we decided to just leave the house completely. There was a small passageway <coughs> uh, just behind my aunt's, my, my uncle's home. And one by one, we quickly, uh, without carrying any of our documents, without carrying anything else but ourselves and our family, we rushed there quickly, one by one and we were, we, we decided to stay there for a bit and hide there from everything that's been going on. Was, and, and, and there were a lot of people there in that house who were already hiding. My niece and everyone, the babies were crying. Luckily, my wife, I mean, she was not there to experience all of that. And I'm so thankful to God that she didn't go through that. Tianhui didn't go through that. And everyone was praying they were all crying, they were clueless, they were waiting for some hope with all the lights off. 
and there was another room where there was a security uh, uh, computers and then they had a security cam and so people were just breaking the gates and we saw that from the camera and then uh, that's when we also started to plan another thing and es escape from the back of the house once again and we were really frightened so there were some ladies there uh, who wanted to just they go back what's, what's that word just talk it out explain to them that okay we're innocent we're just here we'll, we live here we haven't done anything wrong but the mob refused to listen as soon as they broke the gates open they rushed in we saw them moving in from the camera and they were screaming and uh, and shouting in in their language telling us all to come out one by one so we left and luckily just a few of the men from the mobs they were I, I think they were kind enough to just say do not hit or attack any uh, women women or children or animal and we rushed out again we went out of the exit gate there was a small street and the police were there waiting and we quickly, all of us, rushed to the police, thinking that they'll uh, actually provide us with some shelter and protection. And in fact, luckily enough, they, nothing happened on the street. We were just waiting for things to happen. And in that moment, while we were waiting, we saw buildings on fire, gas cylinders exploding, uh, people just crying over and over and begging to things, for things to stop. And then um, last, at the last moment, uh, the police started to react and shot some fire tear, tear gas. And then that's when they could disperse the mob a bit. I could not take my dog, Charlie, with me. I begged the police officers. I even told them that Charlie is like a son to me. And in, instead of listening to me, I mean, it's it's more like a he's more like a family so there was space in the police vehicle along with my family so i told him it's just a dog it's just my dog please let him I'll, I'll carry him and and the police kept on shouting and abusing me in their language saying that i'm not man enough i'm not uh, strong enough and all of that i mean that wasn't even the right time to say that so i had to leave that <coughs> leave Charlie back I mean luckily there was we had neighbors we knew some people there who were whose homes were not affected and we kept in there I, I told the owner that I'll be back the next day I told the owner just to take care of the of, of the of Charlie and also the two puppies we had to leave everything there and then I had no choice and I left with my mom and, and my aunt and my uncle my everyone else my grandmom in uh, three police vehicles and we were there we dropped we they dropped us at the police station and even on the way we were just afraid of what was happening but there was just some sort of peace that I had that at least we were safe um, so police station um, my aunt uh, my mom called her side of the family asking us to pick us up from the from the police station and we were there for a night I couldn't sleep at all I was crying I was asking why I was asking why God what what why is this happening to me to us what have we done wrong I was never part of anything else I um, I was just living my life and for the most part, I was just worried about my wife the whole time. And like, fortunately, she was safe that night. And maybe you can share the night is over, then May 3rd was over. You can share your part of that day after I dropped you home. So uh, after uh, he dropped me home, uh, your aunt, uh, she called me up. And she asked me like, "Oh, Dinah, are you fine? Are you safe? Like, uh, what's going on there near your, uh, in your locality? This and that." And then I was telling her, "Oh, I'm completely fine. Everything is normal. But yes, there are like uh, police all around. So 
I think it will be safe because the police are here nothing much of a big deal and then uh, I asked her what about you aunt and then she was like oh don't worry about us everything is so normal um, there are like many police around so you don't have to worry about us you also take care of yourself and then uh, don't worry about us and all mm, his aunt told me on the uh, phone call then again after some time i got a phone call from his uh, another aunt and she was also asking me how i was and then how how was it, like everything going on there in my locality and then i told her like, everything is fine nothing because at that time nothing happened there were just police uh, sirens no you call them sirens i could hear sirens and then like police uh, basically telling everyone to go inside and close the shop and everything like, it was like that so i never thought that uh, i mean growing up in manipur imphal i never thought that uh, i think it, that was normal because close closing the shop then the police sirens and everything it's pretty normal there like when there is a protest or something going on so i didn't pay much of the attention and that uh after i think seven around seven thirty, uh michael called me and then he was telling me that oh uh babe there's like uh stones and sticks and everything uh they're throwing stones and sticks and everything then i got so scared that i was like um uh, i was so worried about him first of all and i was worried about the puppies i was worried about charlie and then i didn't know what to do i was so helpless because here at my place there was like nothing going on but yes i could hear like tear gas and everything going on but then i i i didn't know that uh, the situation was worse where he was uh, staying so he was calling me was shaking and i just told him uh go and take a shelter somewhere then that's when he went to his grandma's house and then after that he was not picking up my calls i tried calling him many times i tried calling his mom i tried calling his aunt i tried calling everyone but everyone was like very what do you call like you almost know, like okay it was scared. all chaotic yeah it was all chaotic that no one picked up my phone and i got so worried i was crying inside my room and i was requesting my elder brother to uh you know i was telling him like please let's go and uh, pick up michael or let's go and pick up their family we're safe here and i don't feel like i was really restless at that point and i was requesting my brother let's go let's go let's go and then my brother was like it's not safe to go right now it's dangerous and then you're on top of that you are pregnant think of your daughter think of the baby inside your uh, belly think of that michael will be fine don't worry everything will be fine uh, so you don't have to worry because at that point he was not picking up my calls so of course i was so worried right i don't know what was happening because the last time we spoke was he telling me that uh, they were throwing stones and sticks and then uh, the car his car being burnt and just that after that i didn't get to talk to him so i didn't sleep i was not even eating properly but at that point of time I don't know like something just hit me and i just started packing everything because um i remember i started packing uh tianhoi's clothes and then i started packing her milk uh, i started boiling the water and i just i filled it in the uh, flask i don't know i was like it was like i was just prepared that okay if i have to run i have to carry all this uh like i can manage but my my daughter needs all these things so i was packing everything and i kept it ready in my bag and i was just i kept on calling him again and again and again and again but he was not picking up at this point i was so worried i was so scared and then i was like waiting for him to call me back so since uh, i think after 7 30 pm we we didn't get to speak at all so around like um uh, i think around 10 10 30 like that we finally got to talk to each other and she uh, and he told me that he was in the police station yeah, I so to you from my mom's home. yeah and then i got more scared like police station then I, t I told my my mom, I, I remember telling my brother that uh, he's in the police station. I'm so scared. Let's just go now. I don't care. If you, if you guys are not coming with me, I'll just walk to. I'll just walk and I'll just go to the police station. That 
that's what I told my brother. I I still remember very clearly. And then my brother was like, Are you crazy? He is more safe in the police station. So let him be there. Don't worry. He'll be safe there. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, <clears throat> you just rest and you'll be tired. So uh, we'll, tomorrow we'll find a way and then we'll go and pick him up. But for now, it's everything was still very fresh. Everyone was so angry and the houses were burning. Everything was going on. So it was not safe to go out also. So that's how my brother calmed me down and told me that everything will be fine you just look at your daughter and then you're even conceiving one right now so take care of yourself you don't have to worry about michael he's in the police station he'll be safe there and then uh tomorrow morning we'll find a way to go and uh, pick him up so that's how that that was what was happening on my side so nothing like i didn't get to experience the mob luckily and then i my daughter didn't get to experience the mob the tear gas and everything i was so lucky and i'm so thankful till today that my daughter didn't get to see such things and then i didn't get to see such things because I, i'm sure if i was there i don't know what would have happened to me or my daughter and then you know how kids are like how toddlers are they are they are very uh playful they're very you know like they're at that point where even if we try to stay quiet also they'll start crying and everything it would be it would be too much for us but luckily i didn't get to experience such things because i was there at my parents house i don't know maybe it was a sign from god that uh well, he was telling me over and over again that that night michael was telling me babe let's go back home and all that i told him i want to stay more at my parents place i'm i just want to rest for some more days so you go ahead so i take it as a sign that god was telling me not to go back there so that i wouldn't have to experience such things like those mobs their yeah. gas and you know i don't even want to imagine what my husband went through so yeah that was what happened i was at my place and then uh, we could hear tear, gra tear gas like exploding from my house and then gunshots and everything but nothing serious like attacking houses and homes at that point yeah, yeah he was facing worse than what i was facing so i didn't sleep the whole night and then so May 3rd, that was May 3rd. Yeah. On May 4th, early morning, what happened? May 4th, um, I called uh, Diana's uh, uncle mm -hmm. and I was asking him, requesting him rather to come and pick me up. And my, fam my mom's family were quite worried. They were saying, stay here for some time. Uh, you'll be safe here. But I told them that whatever it is i need to be next to my wife and my daughter yeah, even if we, even have, if we have to die yeah. or even if someone were to stop us and kill us i had need to be with my wife and daughter and so uh, your uncle he um he he said yes he came in and early. picked me up early in the morning around i think it was around 8 a.m mm -hmm. and i had to say goodbye to my mom for for some time and she was safe, she was safe in that place. And so I was not worried about my mom much, but I was worried about her and my daughter. So luckily because, on the way. Like because uh, they could attack our locality also anytime. Exactly. And their locality, her locality was vulnerable to the mob as well. So on the way I, I saw uh, there was no one on the street, a few cars, a few people, with their morning walks i mean some people were unaware but most of the shops were quite uh, were closed some of the tires were burning on the road and we made our way to her locality and that's when we finally reunited reunited and, it was and we're not gonna name names we're not gonna give addresses right now because no one is here we're not in a peaceful state yet, yeah. so I don't want to put someone in danger because of the names or addresses that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. But we finally reunited. I was so happy. I, I, I just 
hugged my wife and kissed her, kissed my baby Tianoi. And I, I think Tianoi was not sleeping at all. And until I arrived, um, I, I, I think I hugged her and then we, we took a short nap. And before that, I was still worried about Charlie. And we kept on calling the person, the neighbor, and he was not even giving us a good response, let alone that, some hope. Yeah, that made us more worried. Yeah. Like, is he still alive? Where is he? Is he doing fine? Is he eating anything? Exactly. Yeah. And then on top of that, yes, since no one gave a clear answer, even from the phone, at least the least he could have done. I mean, this is what really angered me that there was at least inform or maybe even lie that he fed my dog or Charlie. He fed Charlie, he's okay. So I cried, I thought I, it was over. I thought actually we, we lost Charlie that day. And I'm sure you remember me crying, just giving up on, on everything else for, for, for a moment there. And I picked myself up and I think uh, we, we were there, we were quite happy that at least you, you were next to me finally. I, I got to eat something. And so the next day, the next day, 4th of May, um, we got pictures and this was right before the internet was banned in Manipur. And I saw my home and my uh, pictures of my car as well and the shops outside our home all burnt with like, rooms basically they burnt our house they, and also the neighboring uh, the neighbors even their homes were all burnt the church was all gone as well and basically whatever whoever lived there from our i mean our people after they left most of them most of the homes were burnt the next day after looting everything. Our, my, my, our camera, our, our computer, my, my laptop and sofas and a few things that were just easily um, available to just grab and go quickly. Most of those things were lost before burning the home. And we, a friend of ours, he went there and that's how we got the pictures and he said that nothing was there that could have been retrieved retrieved everything was just ashes ashes and all black and all burnt it was not even safe to just walk there because there would have been sharp objects so basically they burnt our car first and then after that uh, they looted whatever they could like our cameras, our laptops, our clothes, our blankets, our um, utensils, whatever that was like easily accessible, like easily that was easy to carry. I I think um, and then my gold chain and then yeah. uh, our daughter's uh, high chair, our daughter's clothes, everything everything was looted first and then they burnt our house after that they burnt our house they burnt uh, the houses of our neighbors and then the church everything gone okay yeah i mean this was i'm sure it's hard for everyone and um we all this is somehow old news now it's already i think five months and, and we're not acting like a victim or anything here but this really happened to us that um, yeah. on May, May 3rd I mean if a victim speaks out then he has every right to speak out mm. we're not playing vic the so called victim card here but just sharing we're not trying to gain sympathy nothing like that we're just sharing whatever that happened to us that particular day that's it um. after we met like after reuniting uh, we left my house, uh, my locality, and uh, we went and took a shelter in my, uh, what do you call it? someone's house. Yeah. Yeah. We were there, and we, would, we, we thought we'll stay there for a bit, mm. and, but we decided that it was not really that safe. Yeah. 
because it could affect them as well. And then, so we were all moving quickly, no much more details, but we were picked up from by, by the army. We sat in the truck, uh, truck sorry, and they uh, dropped us to a camp where we stayed there for almost not a complete night, but yeah, we was we were there. We what time did we reach? We reached camp? around 10, 10 p.m. Yeah, 10 p.m. We didn't sleep. We were just so eager to wait for the next morning to leave for Delhi. We met so many people, so many familiar faces oh, there in the right. camp. Uh, we met his. We were grandma. Reuni reunited yeah. with my grandmom <coughs> and aunt, nephew, niece, and everyone. We got reunited, like reunited there. Our locality people, his locality people, everyone was like, most of them were re reunited there in that camp. Yeah. This was on May 5th. May 5th. 10 so. p.m., around 10 p.m. Because yeah. we were not sleeping because we had to be alert. Like anytime they could call us for like dropping us to the airport. So we were so alert. Like we should not miss this. Uh, like if we miss that we bus. Yeah, we would have missed our flight as well. Yeah, that's why we have to be so alert. We didn't sleep at all. And so we got that opportunity to sit in that bus. There were just a few, two, three buses that would drop people to the airports, whoever wanted to fly or take flights and the bus was a bulletproof bus yeah, right yeah it was bulletproof mm. we, on our way on our way we saw a very heartbreaking <laughs> what do you what will you call incident or because like I mean, was everything a, was everything so normal for this for particular others. yeah for the others like and here we are inside a bulletproof bus you know yeah, people, fearing for our lives people were jogging yeah. going about with their daily walk or heading to work people were buying shops uh, things from the shops in the market on the way there was a queue in the and i saw many people staring at us as if they were very angry yeah like we did something wrong yeah. and then on the way we saw our house oh. so in order to pass the airport road we have to pass our house and our house is just next to the main road and, and seeing our house it, my, my heart was quite heavy that moment and I mean it's very difficult to even say this so we passed our house we reached the airport fortunately nothing happened to us and there were many people People waiting. were like even s spending the night there in the airport. In the at the airport. airport. At the airport yeah. There were still many people who, who didn't even get their tickets. Our 11, flight was the first flight. Yeah. Yeah. Nine. Uh, Eleven, I think. I don't even remember. Like but I do have a ticket which I still keep it from memory so that one day I'll just frame it. <laughs> so we took the flight and we reached the Delhi safely yeah we were just in our pajamas yeah. slippers that's the only thing that we were carrying that's it we were just in our the clothes we were wearing our slippers and then that's it and also our brother-in-law was kind enough to help Book us with the tickets yeah and that's how we got the tickets early otherwise we would have actually waited for a long yeah. time so we are also grateful for that help not just our brother my brother-in-law but everyone else who helped us mm. from from even such a small action to shooting a tear gas to disperse the mob when one at least one police person p p policeman did that or when my dog Charlie was uh, you know safe for some time I have no idea where the puppies are. I hope if they're still alive and whoever took them, I hope you take good care of them and feed them well because they're wonderful babies as well. Yeah. And also I am just very happy and grateful that nothing happened to my wife that day and that she was not there to experience things. And also for people who sheltered us 
I'm not gonna give any names. You People, know who you are. You know who we're talking about. Yeah. And we're grateful that you've accommodated us. Took the risk. Took the risk, in fact, that's right. And to that person who took our camera. Yeah, I hope you made good use of it. And you'll see lots of memories, cute memories of video clips that he has recorded in that camera. And if you have taken my laptop as well, there's still many memories. But I hope you make good use of it. Yeah. There was there were many things. Again, we're not we're not, we're not worried about that anymore. Because we we have to learn we how can to always start. We can start again. And yeah. We can forgive. Yeah. It's like it's not the things that was lost it's the memories Photo I, album. I I remember my father-in-law he has his diaries from which 1980s yeah. he uh, always has one uh, a diary each, a year yeah, a diary a year uh, photo like our childhood pictures photos many yeah I mean people will get angry with me saying this but we was we were there we were there since inception uh but yeah just like you said memories even tianhui's clothes shoes that we after saving and working and earning money and just buying that with our hard-earned money and it's not about you know buying things it's just the memories that we make out like of them we can always buy but uh, what do you call like when she grows up i always wanted to show her her clothes when she was born mm -hmm. and so Oops. all these little things that you know <laughs> that affected us her toys her clothes her books i, I am i am someone like who likes to collect things and keep it very in a proper way so that later in the future I could show it to her uh, yeah for like I was not sure whether I was having a baby girl or a boy the second baby so I always thought that if I have a baby girl again I could always you know let her wear the clothes her, her sister wore when she was born and then still fills our heart with anger even till today but there's nothing much that we can do for now and we're not the only ones who went through this there are many people Almost everybody, we're not the only ones we're not the only ones there are, there are many people who've, who've lost their loved ones not just things but loved ones and we all are going through the same thing and I hope that us sharing this, once again as a reminder, we're not asking for sympathy here. We're not asking you to feel sorry about us or mock us and laugh at us. Sometimes we just want to share. And if we have a platform to share so that people can hear what happened, we will. It's not going to stop me. Even now, I, I know people will be commenting, saying those words but just think about it for once. How would you feel if that thing happened to you? When you've done nothing wrong? How would you feel? So let's, let's just... Getting threats every single day. Calling names at us when we have done nothing wrong. And I've always told my wife to do not respond because it will affect us it's not because that I'm weak or scared we can talk back but we're not gonna gain anything out of it we're just gonna be entertaining them they're gonna be happy that we respond to their comments but again it's okay because that's who they are. Yeah. That just shows their mentality. 
So anyway, we haven't named names, no addresses. We don't blame anyone. We don't blame anyone. We're just sharing our experience. Our experience. What happened, whatever happened to us on May 3rd till yeah. May 6th. 6th was the day we landed in Delhi. So, <clears throat> so I'm just grateful that everyone is safe, my family, everyone. Yeah. Glad that my parents are here with me. His parents are here with us. Everyone's yeah, safe, everyone's at least safe. for our family. And to everyone who lost their families, who lost their loved ones from both sides, I know, like it must be really hard. Deepest condolence to everyone. When everyone, like to those people who lost their loved ones. Yeah. So we're back again. Um, we have decided to carry on and start afresh, start from zero. And. The only thing like we have right now is my phone, so we'll try to manage with my phone for now. Yeah. And whenever we have time, then we'll make more content, more vlogs. Um, my my wife, my my babies, and whatever she wants to film. And whenever I have time, we can just sit and edit things together. We we'll try to be active, but with two babies, without a helper, without a nanny. It's really going to be tough, but I'll try my best to film. And then, uh, since he's working from Monday to uh, Friday, sometimes he works on Saturday as well, so he won't be much in the videos. But I will try to film as much as I can, and then I'll try to post at least like two videos a week. Uh, and then, if you guys have any suggestion, like what you guys want to watch, you can always put it in the uh, you can always yeah write it in the comment section and then we can always you know we can yeah. check them out and then yeah I mean we would really appreciate if you can suggest a few things as well and give us ideas as well and we'll come up with more ideas of our own mm. and since at least we're looking ahead to the future we're looking for more positive things yeah. and we have hope in a great God who cares for us who loves us and who will always be with us so we rest our faith and hope in him and i am we are sure we are rest assured that everything will be taken care of in the future so whenever we're free do expect um, us to upload more content mm -hmm. we've been absent for almost nine ten months i mm -hmm. think and youtube is also a platform where we sort of not just share our our content but we also make some sort of a living out of it i mean if not much but at least something yeah. and so since we are starting afresh we'll continue forward with this yeah, i hope you guys keep us showing love and just keep showing love to us and then yeah thank you so much for being so patient thank you for watching us Thank you, uh, our videos. And thank you for hearing out. Yeah. So basically, yes. this video is a very long video. I'm sure it will be like more than an hour. It was very difficult for us. I mean, yeah. I, I, I thought it would just finish in just five minutes, but mm, yeah. it was hard for both of us to just speak up and share a few things. Mm. <sighs> All right. We'll, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.